Thank you, Ms. Brunel. You are now recognized for five minutes. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Les Brunel. I'm the National Director for Stop Predatory Gambling, and our mission is to end government sponsorship and promotion of gambling, and I appreciate the invitation to be here today. As you consider Internet gambling, I ask you to imagine yourself sitting down with your kids, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews in front of a video game and encouraging them to put their money into it, to play it over and over again. But you knew they could never win, yet you kept encouraging them to do it. You would never do that. But for the last 40 years in American life, that's exactly what government has been doing by sponsoring and promoting casinos and state lotteries. The more citizens put their money into these games, the more money they're going to lose. Government in this case is not merely permitting private consensual behavior. This is a public policy. This is a government program that actively sponsors gambling and promotes it by granting monopolies and awarding regulatory advantages to favored firms. Government-sponsored gambling is a public policy that's failed. And it's failed because, one, it has transformed gambling from a private and local activity into the public voice of American government such that ever-increasing appeals to gamble and ever-expanding opportunities to gamble now constitute the main ways that our government communicates with us on a daily basis. Government-sponsored gambling has also failed because it's failed to deliver on its promises to fund education, to lower taxes, to pay for needed public services. Just look at the evidence from your own states. But thirdly, most importantly of all, government-sponsored gambling has failed because it has contributed to patterns of inequality in America, increasing the divide in our country between the haves and the have-nots. Now, there are many forces currently contributing to the rise of inequality, such as globalization and technological change, that cannot be directly controlled by public policy. But government-sponsored gambling is a public policy, and it exists only because policymakers want it to exist. So whether it's internet gambling or other forms of government-sponsored gambling, this is a public policy that's based on cheating and exploiting citizens. The best example is slot machines. The machine is mathematically designed that you will lose your money the longer you play it. It's, it's up right from the get-go. It's you know, the more you play, the more you lose. And the big money in internet gambling is an online slot, slots, which make up 65 to 80 percent of all gambling traffic. And you should know in the brick and mortar casino business, 75% 75, 75 of that money they make is coming from slots. It's all about slot machines. And there are countless stories about how government sponsored slots are cheating and exploiting citizens, but I'm going to share just one. In 2004, New York Times reporter Gary Rivlin toured the headquarters of International Gaming Technology, known as IGT. They're America's biggest maker of electronic slot machines, and today they've designed a leading platform for internet gambling. Rivlin, the New York Times reporter, tells the story of his visit to the IGT building. Quote, most of the time, most of the people I met inside IGT told me they never played slot machines on their own time. Every, even one uh, corporate PR staff member couldn't resist shaking her head in disbelief as she described scenes of people lining up to play a new machine. Quote, it was unbelievable to me, she told me. And when I asked one IGT, IGT artist if he ever plays, he acted as if I insulted him. Slots are for losers, he spat. And then coming to his senses, begged me to consider that an off-the-record comment to a New York Times reporter. Slots are for losers, he said, and many of these losers are your constituents. In government's partnership with gambling, there is one kind of loser who is the most lucrative of all, the problem gambler. We refer to these people, we refer to these people as the expendable Americans because everyone else is going to benefit from the public dollars that come in from people's gambling losses, but this money, it, we rented millions of Americans expendable, the addicts. Gambling operators spend millions of dollars on public relations and research to create the public impression they're not exploiting citizens. Yet despite all this money, there are two questions they never answer. And maybe we'll get that at this hearing today. The first one is, how much gambling revenue comes from problem gamblers? And the second question is, what percentage of gambling revenue comes from people who follow, quote, responsible gam gambling codes of conduct? We hear that a lot, responsible gambling. How, many, how much of their revenues come from people who actually practice that? So on the last page of my written testimony, there are 11 different studies, 11 different independent studies that show 40 to 60% of their profits, gambling profits, come from problem gamblers. 
And that list was compiled as part of a recent report titled, Why Casinos Matter, written by the Institute for American Values. So the second question is, gamblers who manage to follow responsible gambling codes of conduct, they contribute a mere 4% of gambling revenues. So in closing, government's partnership with gambling has failed. The evidence is all around us that it's been a failed experiment. And sponsoring internet gambling would be the biggest failure of them all. Just like we wouldn't encourage our own kids or grandchildren to put their money into a video game they would never win, it's time our government stopped cheating and exploiting our own citizens by sponsoring gambling. Thank you.